Welcome back to a new episode here in Swabi. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you the first three transitions here in the slideshow video, I guess. Um, yeah, so let's just get started right away. This is the take, I don't know, 444 probably. Uh, but yeah, so I couldn't do, I didn't like the way this turned out yesterday. So I'm gonna divide this video in two parts. It's gonna be the first one, which is gonna be the one in 2D effects, and then the second part is going to be the ones that have the 3d that are done in the 3d portion of fusion all right okay so the first thing we're going to do is we need to first make our clips fusion layers for that we're going to have we have these two pictures right here and we're going to get the first one and then we're going to go 12 frames uh right here plus 12 means 12 frames and then we're going to do the same for the clip that's below and the way you organize this is the clip that comes before or first has to be on top and then the second clip which is the one that comes next has to always be at the bottom and then we're gonna right click and we're gonna press new fusion clip then we're gonna go right into fusion and we can do the first effect that we have for the first effect it's pretty easy just simple layers and what we're gonna do is up here on this frame we're gonna take this media out pull here out on this frame we're gonna, we're gonna create a square or a rectangle shape and we're gonna increase the height of it all the way to one and then we're gonna put the center position in 0.25 which is gonna be like the half of the half and then we're gonna copy and paste this and put this at 0.75 which is the other half right and there we have our masks covering everything right if we invert it we're gonna see the next frame but we don't want to invert it so the way that we're gonna do this animation is we're gonna go to frame 5 and when we're gonna animate the width so we're gonna create a keyframe for both of them and then we're gonna go to frame 15 there you can choose however long you want it to be right and then we're gonna put these to zero we're gonna put both of them to zero and then gonna frame it let me just take the high quality out for now and that's pretty much it but it still looks a little bit too flat right so how do we make this look a little bit better the key for this is shadows okay so what you're gonna go to your selection tool and you're gonna press ctrl m for that and you're gonna select drop shadow effect and that is basically gonna add the shadows right here behind this first image that we have and that may, you can play around with the strength and all that stuff, the options here, but I'm gonna leave that to you. Uh, the angle and everything. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it as, as it is, as default, I guess. And that is pretty much it. But the, the ones that I had, had a little bit one more thing. So we're gonna copy these rectangles and we're gonna paste them again. And we're gonna create a new background that we can change the color of. If we in the in this example we, in the example it's white. I think here we can make it purple just because, and we're gonna connect these two here, right? And that's gonna cover our image, but we don't want to use that. We're gonna go back to our rectangle copies that we have, and we're gonna take the solid out for both of them. Then after that, we're gonna go to frame five, and we're gonna create a keyframe for the border width in both of them. Then we're gonna go one more frame forward and we're gonna create a board, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of the border width. Uh, it doesn't have to be much. I think it was like point, let's see, as long as we can see it, it's fine. Let's see how that one looks. That's a little bit too much already, I think. Let me just bring it down to like 0 .00. Let's do point zero zero. Let's do point, zero zero three and then we're gonna just copy that same number and the same keyframe to the other rectangle that we have so that is basically gonna add that border and dividing it like that and that was pretty much that was it for number one you can play around with the spline and all that stuff but i'm gonna leave that to you i hope that you already know about all that stuff but let me just show you real quick if you're new and you haven't watched the other videos basically you go to the spline then select everything then select everything or you can play, press ctrl a and then you can press f and that will add the curves to make the movement a little bit smoother and that's pretty much it 
Okay, so then for the second one, let's just go back into Fusion again. And inside Fusion, we're gonna put our top layer right there on top. And on this layer, we're gonna add a rectangle. Gonna make the width go all the way to two actually. And then we're gonna move these a little bit like that. And we're gonna bring the height all the way to zero. And we're gonna try to adjust the angle so that we have it laying right on the corner. Whoop, right there, that's fine. And then what we're gonna use to any, then we're gonna take the solid out and we're gonna invert this. Right? There, when it's inverted, what it means is that if we played with these, um, we should be able to reveal the image that we have. Okay, so the rectangle doesn't have, if you have your rectangle at zero, it's not gonna work, the height. So you can, if it is in 0.1, I think it will work. There it goes. And then we're gonna have our border width at zero, that's fine. And then what we're gonna animate before anything is, we can go here to frame seven. We can go to frame seven here and we're gonna create a keyframe for our border width. And then frame 16 or 17, it doesn't really matter. We can create, uh, we can make it go all the way up to one. So it opens up. So then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add our line here, right? And for that, we're gonna add this background. We're gonna add the color white because it was white in the other one. We're gonna add a polygon. For this polygon, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a path that goes right across. And you can select this rectangle to sort of like try to use it as a guide if you want. But if you don't want to, that's fine too. Um, there, we're gonna increase the border width of these a little bit. Let's see, oh, it's not connected. That's why we can see it. Right here, we're gonna connect it first. Now we can increase the border width and we can see it right there, right? We can adjust this a little bit. That's fine. And we're gonna animate this by going to frame zero. And I pray, put this the length here to zero, create the keyframe. Then we're gonna go here to frame five. We're gonna put it all the way to one. And then on frame five, we're gonna create a position keyframe. And then on frame seven, which is when the other one starts, we're gonna increase the position. So the line sort of gets eaten up. So it's sort of like a slash cut, right? And then let's look at it. And that's that effect. If you want it to be slow, you just have to make it last longer in the keyframes. And we can also add, as always, the drop shadows here. So let's see how that looks. It looks a little bit more like it adds a little bit of depth. So for the third one, we're gonna put the clips again where they should be one on top of the other we're gonna cut them the third one okay we're gonna go back into fusion so this third one is a little bit different in the sense that it doesn't use uh, it, it doesn't use the squares as the mask but it uses the polyline and the reason for these the polygon I'm sorry is that we can do these rotation in, in this sort of like 3D rotation um, with these ones. So we're gonna try to put these right in the middle. Here, let's see. There, once it's close. And then we see here that's, that's where our pivot point is. We're not able to change the pivot point here for some reason. So we're gonna drag these to this side. And there, that's fine. And then we're gonna copy this and paste it. And we're gonna rotate this uh, in the Z or Z to 180 degrees. It can be positive or negative, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna cover the other side with this. When you're actually doing this for real, you might wanna use some square, some actual square shapes as your so rectangles here as your guides. So it's aligned perfectly. 
but other than that that's fine okay so then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the polygon polygon the polygon polyline here on both of them because that creates a keyframe right and then we're gonna go back to frame 5 I'm gonna go to this one the one on the right and we're gonna press uh we're gonna adjust the rotation for here for the Y rotation so we're gonna create a keyframe for that and then we're gonna go to frame 15 and make the rotation 90 degrees so that's gonna be sort of like an opening window right okay then one thing we can do also before we move forward uh let's adjust this there's so they're sort of like closer to the the edge of our picture and then we're gonna do the same thing for the other uh polygon but instead of positive 90 it's gonna be minus or negative 90 degrees that looks fine so far but then what we want to do to make it a little bit cooler what we want to do to make it a little bit cooler is we're gonna go here to frame 8 we're gonna go here and right click and then animate and that's gonna allow us to animate the polygons lines here when we move and then at frame let's say 12 we're gonna drag these whoops to be up there and if you're able to drag it straight vertically that's that's better and then we're gonna do the same for this side try to make it as aligned as possible sort of like eyeballing it right now and then that is gonna add that effect of sort of like an opening door or opening windows and then as I mentioned previously then we're gonna add the shadows the drop shadow which is gonna make the effect a little bit even better because it actually just looks like it's there's a perception of depth in our picture so yeah, that is pretty much it for that one. And you can also adjust the polylines if you want by going here and then selecting everything, pressing Control A, Control A, and then you press F and make everything a little bit smooth. You can also go to your polygon here and go to the settings and add motion blur to it. So then they look even smoother. And that is pretty much it. So um, those were the three 2D sort of like transitions in the slideshows that you can do that you can use for if you have a presentation or whatever, you can use these techniques to add a little bit more, uh, a little bit more spice, I guess you could say to your slideshow. Or if you're making a slideshow for families or for a wedding or anything that you can think of. So without further ado, I'm going to try to do the 3D version for maybe drop it tomorrow and maybe that will include the freebie. And I was thinking about making sort of like a cube that then you can just add your image into and then that will be the freebie for tomorrow. Um, okay, without further ado, thanks for watching. Let me know down in, down in the comments if you find this useful, useful, if you like it or you don't like it or what you would like to learn or anything else down in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you're not yet. I've looked at the stats the other day and there was a lot of people that are not subscribed. But don't feel obligated to. If you don't want to subscribe, don't subscribe. Um, yeah, I hope to see you in the next video here in Swabi.